My name is Danny Ortega, and I work for the Ortega Law Firm. I've been a lawyer in this town for over 40 years. I practice primarily in the area of personal injury. You know, you've heard the commercials over to me by the lawyers who tell you that they do auto accident work. Well, I do a lot of work involving auto accidents, as well as medical malpractice. If you feel that a doctor, a hospital, or a medical provider has somehow not giving you the proper medical treatment and that has injured you or if you lost a loved one as a result of a malpractice we do that work too we also do cases like dog bites slip and falls things of that nature where you've been injured because of the negligence of another that is the kind of work that we do This is Irma from Arizona Barrio Stories. Today we welcome you and we welcome a guest. We are here today with Earl Wilcox. Earl, welcome. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me, where did you grow up? Well, I grew up at uh, Grant Park, just south of downtown. Uh, I come from a big family. There was 13 of us. 13? 13 of us in the family. And it was three sisters, Linda, Mary, and Patsy, and it was 10 brothers. Oh my. And I, and I won't name all of those because sometimes I forget. <laughs> I forget their <laughs> names at, at my age. <laughs> but I had 10 brothers raised here at Grant Park and very close to uh, the restaurant that we all, that my wife and I own right now at Portal. Very close to uh, our schools, Grant School, Lowell School, our church. St. Anthony's and the American Legion and the Friendly House. So that so, was that was kind of like my world growing up. So did you graduate from Grant or I know a couple of people went to Grant then they ended up at Lowell? Yeah and the reason for that was because Grant at that time up to 1961 only went to the seventh grade and then everybody that was in the seventh grade had to transition over to Lowell School and I graduated from Lowell School in 62. 1962. And high school? Where did you go to high school? Phoenix Junior. Well, actually, went to South Mountain one year, as in my freshman year, and then went to Phoenix Junior for three years. Graduated in 1966. Awesome. And Long time ago. And we've all seen pictures of you playing sports oh for god. Phoenix Junior. Oh my god. <laughs> Awesome legs, Earl. <laughs> now, is basketball the only sport you played? Yeah, basketball. I uh, really had a passion for baseball, but then I couldn't hit the ball, you know? <laughs> couldn't hit the ball, and uh, I stayed with uh, basketball. Basketball is a little bit more, and a little bit more physical, and um, called for a little bit more skill and uh, ended up at Phoenix College playing basketball there and at Grand Canyon College. Awesome. Do you remember any teammates from Phoenix Union that you still associate or oh, hang out yeah, with? Oh yeah, some real real good friends of mine. They're almost like brothers. Uh, there's uh, Jimmy Hernandez. He was uh, just retired as a Justice of the Peace. Cell uh, Martinez. Cell uh, was from the Verde Park area, 9th Street. Cell uh, um, worked for a number of banks and she comes for la causa uh, there was vincent peralta from uh, golden gate uh, another person that was really close to me andy lanessis we lost him uh, a couple years ago he's from golden gate um, those are some of the basketball players from finishing that i played with at Phoenix College and at Grand Canyon. I had another really close friend of mine that were like brothers, Rudy Santa Cruz. Uh, 
probably the best basketball player that ever came out of Carl Hayden, but really a dirty basketball player, very dirty. <laughs> but we played together at Phoenix College and at, um, and at uh, Grand Canyon College. But all these people, Sal, uh, Rudy, Jimmy, Vincent, Andy, they're all very close to me and they're like brothers. You know. uh, Bobby Buchanan uh, was from this neighborhood, Grand Park, Carlos Contreras, was from um, the Marcos de Nisa, and uh, very good basketball players. Sounds like a brotherhood. A brotherhood yeah. of, of yeah, sports you know. brought you together and then yeah. the neighborhood. Sports was, uh, you know, sports was a big motivating factor in my life. Uh, if it wasn't for sports, if it wasn't people that helped me along the line, there was a person uh, that's almost a legend in this neighborhood, Ruben Calderon. Uh, he mentored me while in high school and um, you know, it's just a family and we're still together. Mike Rojas, the teacher over at Lowell School, we played with him. Uh, Ernie Ledesma, uh, and then my compadre, Alex Navarro. You know, all those, you know, we still have close contact with each other and it's a, it's a family kind of sports bringing us together. Many people that grow up in certain barrios yeah. Their, their goal is to get out. With you, you're back here. Could you tell us why you're back here? What brought you back? I never wanted to leave. Um, right now in Portal, I grew up at, at, next door at the park and across the street from the Grand Park. And, uh, I have a lot of memories here. My grandmother immigrated from Mexico. She became a citizen. She learned how to uh, speak English at the Friendly House. My mother uh, raised all the 13 kids, my brothers and sisters here. I just have a lot of memories from here. When I uh, finished my school, my education, I worked at uh, the Body Youth Project. I worked at the Friendly House. I did some work with Chicanos Pula Causa in a nutritional program in the summer. I never wanted to leave my neighborhood and I still I still uh, want to leave my last days here. My wife, Mary Rose, and I live next door to the restaurant. And um, to us, uh, we, want, we don't want to live anywhere else. We're happy here. We're very much involved in the restaurant, the American Legion, the park, the Friendly House. You're everywhere. She comes for La Causa. I mean, we have no aspirations to leave uh, our radio, Grand Park. Now, recently there was, you guys did something with COVID, correct? Vaccinations? Yeah, um, the way that started is Mary Rose, my wife, is the uh, chairperson for uh, Valley Wise, that's the old county hospital uh, system. Um, and she's very much involved in health issues. So we were approached to do testing a couple of months ago and here at the park, we did it here at the park. There was a big disparity because what was happening with testing and the actual uh, administration of the vaccine wasn't reaching our people. So um, we pitched to the people that uh, had relationships to the testing and to the vaccine and we basically said, you know, we don't want to go anywhere, we want to do it here in our neighborhood. And it's been quite a success. Uh, we've done uh, one vaccine, we've done uh, Casa Primavera, we're going to do Casa Primavera Thursday. We did the, the commissary for the taqueros. Uh, we did that yesterday. Uh, we'll be doing 200 uh, people from our neighborhood this Saturday uh, here at the park. And we've been approached by a number of other uh, agencies, health agencies, to keep doing that. The summer's coming, it's going to get, you know, the heat's going to uh, increase. So we're going to be go doing all the, the vaccines inside of Grand Park. We're looking, looking forward to it. If you were to close your eye, in your mind's eye, 
What do you remember about the surrounding area? Uh, stores or what was here back in the 50s and 60s? What do you remember? What I remember is a, a real vibrant neighborhood. A lot of families that weren't well off, but at the time we didn't know we were well off. Everybody helped each other. Um, so I have some good memories um, from the schools, from the church, from the American Legion, from families, the Buchanan's, uh, Gutierrez's, the Sainz, the Ganderias, you know. Uh, they still come to Grand Park. We have a mural at the park that depicts uh, Dedicated families. to yeah, them. dedicated to that. That's on the positive side, but on the negative side, um, I'm really saddened because our neighborhood is beginning to change a lot. You know, we're so close to, to downtown and the light rail is coming right adjacent to our neighborhood down First Avenue into Central. And as I look back, um, we've lost a lot of families because of, uh, unfortunately, Arizona Public Service has come into the neighborhood. They're in the process of building another power plant that we're opposing at this point, uh, that a lot of us are opposing. Um, so, so you're um, be being moved out. Yeah, being moved out. We had a, we had an apartment complex that we had 60 families uh, just on the other side of the park. That there was some contamination there uh, because of what uh, the work that APS was doing. And we cleaned it out. We cleaned all the, the contamination, but we had to move the folks out. A lot of the senior citizens. A lot of uh, our youth mm -hmm. used to come to the park. Um, and we're in the process of trying to see if we can bring those people back, you know, those families back. We had, growing up in, growing up in this neighborhood, we had Grant School. When APS started expanding uh, and a lot of the families left, Grant, Grant School was closed down because we didn't have the, the students or the families. The same thing happened a little bit over at Lowell School. We had a beautiful school there, and because of financial constraints, that school, Lowell School, we should have, we should have fought harder to, 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 to preserve it, just like Kenilworth, that's a beautiful school, just like Court School. But at that time, we were involved in a lot of the civil rights uh, movement and, uh, some of the working for you know education for our kids and justice issues and the saving of low school just kind of went through our hands mm -hmm. kind of sad that of what's happening in the neighborhood but we're trying to build it back up so a little bit of the taking the good with the yeah, bad yeah yeah so it's a constant constant uh i wouldn't say it's a challenge it's an opportunity for us to see if we could preserve Grant Park and Grant Park and the neighborhood. And that's what Arizona Barrios is about, preserving yeah. history. Mm -hmm. Earl, we want to thank you. Thank you for being with us today. And hopefully somebody will tune in and, and that story will touch them and they will want to share their story. Thank you for tuning in today. We have had a really good opportunity to listen to Earl and his memories. Remember, you have a story also. If you don't tell your story, no one else will. There's a lot of stories out there that people want to hear. Thank you from Irma and Arizona Barrio Stories, and we'll see you again. This is Irma from Arizona Barrio Stories. Thank you for tuning in. Today, as usual, we have a special guest and you're gonna learn a little bit more about him. Mike, could you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Irma, it's a pleasure to be here. 
first of all. Uh, my name is Mike Mendoza. I grew up in the Golden Gate neighborhood. I attended Skiff School Elementary School. I went to uh, Wilson uh, High School, también, and then I went to Phoenix Union High School. Um, I was born and raised in the house on 1742 East Maricopa, 18th Street and Buckeye, más o menos. And what part of Golden Gate is that? Uh, it was on the, I think it was the south side, uh -huh. southeast side, yeah. And could you tell me something, what do you remember when you hear the name Golden Gate, what comes to mind? What are the things that, that stand out from growing up? At Golden Gate, I was uh, in a Boy Scout troop, Troop 334. And it was a great experience for me. I remember Mr. Peralta, I remember my other uh, Boy Scouts uh, teammates, and it was great, great experience for me, and it was at Golden Gate Center. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now, you told me you worked at Leroy's. I did. And who did you work with? I worked with Georgia. And what memories do you have? What type of things did you do while you were working? I swept the parking lot. I swept the parking lot. I swept the inside of the store. I, uh, I stocked the beer. I unloaded the beer trucks. I stopped. At what all the age beer. were you doing this? I was uh, 11 and 12. So I was so just a kid. You were in charge of the beer at beer, 11 and 12. I was just stocking, not drinking, just <laughs> stocking sodas, keeping everything, uh, sandwiches, keeping everything stocked. Yeah, I, I, I up and down that whole store. And when and I wasn't working, I was reading comic books. Out of, out of the, the store? Out of the store, yes. Tell me about Georgia. What do you remember about Georgia? She was a really nice lady. Um, very, very sweet. Uh -huh. um, always eager to teach me what to do. And I remember Barney, and I believe it was Fred. Uh, Fred was the owner, or one of the owners there. So, yeah. yeah but Georgia was really great to me. I. Uh, I always will share you all the memories that I uh, had with her. Yeah. And you attended Phoenix Union, correct? I did. Class of? Class of 71. Mm -hmm. You mentioned to me that you were in a program called Upward Bound. Could you tell me about the program? Best experience I ever had. I share you those memories forever. So every summer, during our uh, starting our sophomore year, uh, they had uh, recruited college-bound students, uh, low-income college-bound students to attend college classes along with uh, regular college students at, on campus at ASU. And we, we went to classes with our regular college students. We had our own classes uh, in between our other college classes. And we took field trips. Uh, we had uh, got to meet a lot of kids from all over the state, from New Mexico, from uh, Arizona, and maybe some from California. Um, we had low-income kids, Native Americans, Asians, Blacks, Latinos, all together in one group for the whole summer. Uh, it was great, great learning experience for me. I got to meet a lot of friends. Did they provide advisors? They did, yes. One of my advisors that stands out was uh, Ms. Duarte and Johnny Cordova. I wish I could find whatever happened to them. Well, with this platform, Maybe, we might yeah. find this person. Yeah, yeah. Now, could you tell me, back in the upward down bound days, was there a feeling like, I know what, what I want to be when I grow up? Or did you have an inkling of what you would become? I knew what I wanted to do when I was in the fifth grade. In wood shop, I started drafting. In wood shop, you have to basically draw your top view, a side view, and a section of what you're going to build in wood. Mr. So, yeah, so I started in, uh, in fifth grade. Do you remember your drafting. teacher's name? I uh, believe it was Mr. Grego. Great experience for me. I remember Mrs. Reese in my fifth grade, también. Uh, great, great experiences. I remember going to lunch with their little tokens with the hole in the middle. It was great, great, great fun. So from, and, and I'm still drafting. So from that point on, 
you knew that you wanted to draw. Draw. And today you're still drawing. I'm still doing it at 69 years old. I am still drafting on a computer. Doing uh, CAD, AutoCAD, designing kitchens, restaurants, and uh, we are uh, dabbling into Revit, where you can see the kitchen in three dimensions. You can literally walk from one part of the kitchen to another part of the kitchen in three dimensions. Yeah. So this, from Upward Bound, they really yes, they inspired, helped you. Yes. After Upward Bound, uh, I had two years of in the College of Architecture at ASU. Just drafting, still in the architecture field, and I'm still in it. Mm -hmm. What would you advise, if you could look back, what would you advise a young Mike, Mike, mm -hmm. what would you tell them to encourage them? I would say stay in school, learn all that you can, uh, just stay, stay with it, yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. If you had to evacuate your house, tell me five items that you would take with you. Um, my laptop, my Coca-Cola memorabilia, Mickey Mouse memorabilia, and let me see what else. Uh, my record collection, I have thousands of LPs. I have CDs, millions of CDs literally so i would take my cds my coke memorabilia mickey mouse and my computer yeah tell me when you think of the word golden gate and you think back what is something that is a vivid memory of from the neighborhood uh, well it was uh, being a boy scout yeah being a boy scout uh i think i was a boy scout for about four years i made it up to eagle scout and we, uh, we had camping experiences at Camp Geronimo, which was great. Um, we did a lot of hands-on crafts and stuff like that, so that, uh, that kept us going and motivated. So I, I learned a lot of good uh, skills, being honest, being uh, loyal, being respectful. You know, that's their uh, Boy Scout oath. Yeah. Awesome. Uh -huh. I would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your stories. I know there's a lot of people out there. They'll tune in and they'll say, hey, I know him. Uh -huh. so, you know how they can remember me too? Do we have a little more time? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was in an accident. An at, accident? Uh, oh, yeah. At Pete's Fish and Chips growing up when I was about 11. What happened? Uh, I was pinned down. We were ordering, uh, we were ordering uh, fish and chips, me and my sister Esther. And I, uh, I got pinned in by a drunk driver at the ordering window. I spent, uh, I spent a whole year out of school. I was in the hospital for a year and a half. Oh my. Uh-huh. Uh, and with that experience, Pete's Fish and Chips was having a contest about three years ago, 2017. And my sister submitted my story about having an accident at Pete's with my, and I had to get air evacuated and all that stuff. So we won the contest. And what and did you win? I got to throw out the first pitch at a Diamondbacks ball game. Throw out the first pitch with the people from Pete's. It was great, And great did they experience. remember you? They remembered that, they remembered that incident. Yeah, so I think a lot of your listeners will remember that incident at Pete's Fish and Chips. Across the street from Calderon. Yeah. yeah. What a memory. Across the street from Calderon. A good, bad memory. Yes, a good, bad memory. But it turned out good in the end because I got to throw out a first pitch at a ball game, well, which we'll never you. do with that again. Thank you for your story. Thank you for being a part of Arizona Barrios. Thank you for your stories. Thank you, Irma. This is Irma. And I hope you liked our today's story. And as always, you have a story too. Please submit your story either by tuning in and writing me at irma.payan at arizonabarriostories.com or post it, post a picture and post your story. Thank you.
un sollozo Mucha gente está alarmada ¿Qué ha pasado? Se preguntan ¿Qué ha pasado? En el mundo Una joven Va gritando Mamá Un esposo Va buscando Su familia Va gritando. 